Hey, good morning, uh, Mercy Village Church. Uh, getting on here just a little bit late again, but uh, if you're in the local area, then you can, can understand why. Crazy morning. But what's great is that Psalm 102 is a psalm that speaks into um, our presence from a place of remembering the past faithfulness of God and reminding ourselves of the future promises of God. It speaks into our presence with hope. And so no matter what the circumstances or situations might be, even ice storms and you know, our generators on, so I know a lot of people are without electricity or things infinitely uh, more difficult to deal with, there is hope for the present. Uh, the faithful past of our God teamed up with the uh, future promises of our God to the hope for the present. And so this psalm um, starts out, it says, a prayer of one afflicted when he is faint and pours out his complaint before the Lord. That's the, the heading for this psalm, and the psalmist dives right in. Psalm 102, verse 1, Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. And so the psalmist in Psalm 102, based on his present circumstances, says the first place that I must turn is to God. Might we be those type of people? Right? I know that in the in for me, oftentimes I turn to fixing, I turn to fighting, I turn to whatever it may be in the midst of circumstances that I am not enjoying, circumstances that are maybe grinding me down or making me churn. The psalmist, he turns to God and prays. Now what happens in verses 3 through 11? There's a lot of verses, we're not going to read all of them, but he expresses the details of how bad his circumstances and situations are. It's worse than a temporary power outage and an ice storm for the psalmist. His circumstances are bad. Just a few of the verses. Verse 4, my heart is, is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. If you've ever been there where you're so depressed and so upset that you don't even feel like eating or you forget to eat, that's where he's at. Verse 8, all the day my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name as a curse. So he's being mocked. He's being made fun of. He's having his name drugged through the mud. Maybe that's the type of circumstance that you find yourself in. Verse 11. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like the grass. Again, just the, the deep despair, grief, pain um, that he finds himself in. That's his present circumstances. So he turns, he's turned to God, but he's telling him, this is what my present circumstances are like right now. In verses 12 through 17, though, we see something happen. What he does, and, and so much of the Christian life is this, he remembers the past, they are the promises of God. He remembers the future promises of God. Verse 12, but you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. He says, God, I know that you are in control. I know that you sit on the throne. And so even though my circumstances are out of control, even though my, my uh, situation that I find myself in is causing me to churn, causing me grief, I feel like I'm under the sun, even though that's my current place, I remember that you will reign forever. There are future promises yet to be fulfilled, but they will be. I know that they will be um, in the in the now and in the future. For certainly you will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. Because I know that you promised to be faithful to your people. You get the point. Verse 16 and 17 do a similar thing. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. It's another present and future promise that God is right now listening he hears the prayers of his children and that he will continue to hear the prayers of his children okay so in verses 12 through 17 he's remembering the promises of god in verses 18 through 22 he's remembering the past faithfulness of god so i'll just read those verses let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the lord 
that he looked down from his holy height, from heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoner and set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when people gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. He says, God, we've seen it time and time again. You have showed up and you have delivered your people. Why would now be any different? All right, so if God has been faithful in the past and his promises are true in the future, then there is hope for the present today. He turns back to his present pain in verses 22 through 24. He describes it again. But then, in verses 25 through 28, the end of the psalm, he ties it all together. So let's finish it there. Let's dive into these verses as we close. Verse 25, he says, Of old you laid the foundation of the earth. God, it all started with you. There is nothing that wasn't made by you. There is nothing that wasn't created by you. You are sovereign over it all. You are the creator of it all. It is yours. And the heavens are the work of your hands. There is power in our God. Power beyond anything that we can comprehend. Power that is bigger than our present circumstances and situations. Verse 26, he's talking about his enemies now. They will perish, but you will remain. <laughs> That's good news. That's good news that those who work evil, those who work injustice and do not turn to Christ in repentance, their reigns of evil, their reigns of terror will come to an end. But God's reign will never end. It will last forever. And that's good because he's a loving king, a just king, a righteous king, a kind king, a gentle king. He's the type of king who is the perfect king. He's the king of kings. And so if his reign lasts forever, that's good news. Evil kings, evil presidents, evil rulers, their kingdoms end. They get cast into oblivion. But the reign of Christ is forever. He says, they will wear out like a garment. He's still speaking of his enemies. You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. God is faithful, not just yesterday. God is faithful, not just today. God is faithful forever. Verse 28, the children of your servants shall dwell secure their offspring shall be established before you. If I could sum it all up like this, I would say that the faithful past of our God, when combined with the future promises of our God, give us a hope-filled present today. So, here's the call of Psalm 102 for you today or whenever it is that you find yourself watching it. One, remember the past faithfulness of God. Look for it in your own life, Look for it in the scriptures. Look for it in the stories of the people of God that are in your life. You can say, God is faithful in the past. This is how I saw it. The word of God testifies to his faithfulness in the past. Your life has times where you can look back and say, God is faithful. He came through in the most difficult times. So remember the past faithfulness of God. Number two, remind yourself of the future promises of God. You'll find those in Scripture too. Memorize them, right? Look forward to them. Remember them together with the people of God in community, in uh, Sunday gatherings. Remember the future promises of God. So, or remember the faithful path of God. Remind yourself of the future promises of God and rest in hope today in the present now. Because the God who was faithful in the past is the same God who will keep his promises in the future, and he can sustain you through any circumstances and situations. I hope that's encouraging. It's very elementary, but at the same time, it's like the, one of the deepest needs of our heart is to believe God for who he was, who he will be, so that we can believe him for who he is today. So may that be true of our life. May that be true of your life. Love each of you so much um, and uh, yeah uh, God is faithful forever yesterday today and forever